आप सब देख रहे सलाम नमस्ते ऑन रेडियो पंजाबी नेशनल अगर आप जो है फेसबुक पर जो है कहा जहां से भी देख रहे हैं आई नो सो मेनी पीपल आर वाचिंग फ्रॉम आउट ऑफ टाउन आउट ऑफ टाउन मीन्स इन आउट ऑफ कैनेडा एज वेल एंड ऑफ कोर्स आउट ऑफ कैलग्री एज वेल सो थैंक यू सो सो मच एवरी वन फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस टूडे फॉर द स्पेशल एडिशन ऑफ सलाम नमस्ते यू नो हम Like I know, uh, like I think you know, you might be thinking, why do I say special every time? Yeah, because you know, every week we have a special guest, so that's uh, so it just makes it easy for me to to call it a special show as well. You know, as you know, uh, uh, Joy Tuesday here. It's about six thirty Kelvin time, eight thirty Eastern, and there are so many people will be joining us. You know, as uh, as uh, people kind of share, and you know, hopefully, Jo, me, dekh rahe, you guys can Joy share as well, so then we can get more people on board. so you know uh, like you know as you know we have uh, pandemic going on since march i know we've been talking about it so many things last week we had a dr taj and it was a great show we got a lot of good feedback after the show as well and uh, they you know everyone wants to bring him back so inshallah we will so we will bring him back you know as you know schools are open as of today in calgary and there are some of the schools opened yesterday as well so let's see how the school you know school turns out and what happened to cases i think this is going to be very interesting uh, you know so just uh, let's pray for everyone jo uh, like uh, the reopen of alberta or reopen of uh, yeah you can say canada so goes fine so then we don't get many and many cases so let me add my co salma jadwi she is here as well hello yaar yeah, salma ji bhai main dad kaise hain sab log bas theek hai aapke se aur theek hai bas theek hai aapke se hai फिजिकल डिस्टेंसिंग आई होप चिल्ड्रन अंडरस्टैंड इट विल बी रियली हार्ड फॉर देम बट वट कैन यू डू वी हैव we have to make sure uh, they go back to school and they uh, are safe also so we pray for them yeah that's yeah. right you be, because everyone knows uh, schools are open cases might go up i think people yeah. are ready for it they know it's yeah. natural now everything is opening so hopefully it yeah. will be under, it will be under control so as long as we can push our economy back to normal as soon as that's possible right. so aaj economy of course you know so we are talking about economy so our next guest he is uh, he is a guru of economy he uh, he uh, he uh, he has his own uh, business uh, you can say portfolio on the cdv news as well as the qr77 am news in calgary then he right. he has his own popovich uh, karmali uh, like a financial firm as well so let me add him our good friend faisal karmali from calgary ya ali mera faisal bhai ya ali madad ya ali madad salam alaikum to all how are you guys doing very well how about you i'm well thank you for having yeah. me on your show Oh, any time. You have been uh, with us physically in our studio, but now this is the new norm. We have yeah. to accept it. We call so, this the COVID interviews. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We are having COVID interviews. Yeah, these will be our remembrance too because they'll always be there. So, inshallah, hopefully everything settles down as soon as the vaccine comes along. Yeah. But for the time being, we will do our best, whatever we can do. Absolutely. Yeah, to stay connected. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah. So, Faisal, uh, you know, let's let's like let's uh, jump into it. Uh, uh, I think you know, like you know, as you know, from the March, middle of the March, everything starts to starts to shut down, and you are middle of everything, especially economy part. So, what was your first reaction when everything starts to shut down? What were you telling to your customers? What happened? Like you know, it was suddenly everything happened. Yeah, Jalal. What I was basically telling my clients was that first of all, we. really had no choice from the government perspective they had to shut things down contain this virus um mm-hmm. from an economic perspective it was going to cause some major impacts and that's why the governments all around the world have stepped up either through fiscal policy meaning the government spending money or yeah. monetary policy which is the central bankers trying to protect uh the the credit system and the financial system itself those mm-hmm. things were happening in march it was mayhem uh everybody was concerned and but we all somewhat uh, got together and followed the the, uh, the procedure of of staying home and keeping that lockdown happening and we're slowly starting to see things recover as we speak now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So what what do you think uh, it will lead to this, uh, the economy? What will happen to it? As you know, so many businesses are closing down and so many uh, restaurants and places, especially, uh, you know, like you take a playing place, you know, where children used to get together. All those businesses are and people are feeling that feeling it now so what what do you according to you what do you think personally what is going to happen now yeah so I, I feel that we are we are now in a major shift in an economic viewpoint when we look at uh, previous recessions and and catastrophes in the economy what we have seen is uh, either a u shape which would be a long bottom and then a recovery a v right. shape which would be a quick recovery I don't think we're going to have those uh, those letters come up. I don't even think the W will come up. I think we're in a K-shaped uh, economy going forward. Wow. There's going to be some oh. that are going to shoot up, and there's some business that's going to collapse. And that's a big shift that people are going to have. And we have this every generation. This is not uh -huh. new to us from an economic perspective. The yeah. reason for this K-shape is because of COVID, but uh, it is going to be a K-shape uh, recovery in my view. And this is where businesses that thought they could exist uh, may not be, and there are going to be new businesses that just right. take off. We're using one platform today that no one heard of three years yeah, ago, and right. now everybody's using these online portals as an example yes. of how big the change is going to be in, in the coming years. Right. So, you know, Faisal, uh, you know, especially Alberta, you know, because we were already down because of the oil. And I think we, I think we are the only one who got very, like, like who got hit very hard in Canada. So, so you know, as an Alberta, as an you know, like you know, as an oil oil country, what do we do? Like you know, people yeah. they lost their job; they're working from home. I mean, government started the uh, like a set program. People are not back yet, and they already started the school and everything. So, what's your general general uh, like in conception? Yeah, I use the Alberta economy with the analogy of a double heart attack. It oh, went through a heart attack of COVID. It went through a heart attack because of oil, and not oh, just yeah. this last issue between the Saudis and Russia, which caused oil to go to negative prices. But we had a shock in 2014 as well. And yeah. so we didn't even recover from that. So this is a double heart attack. And anybody in the medical field or those who have seen or heard or, in, or actually experienced a double heart attack knows it takes a long time to recover. That's and it right. will take a lot of change in your diet, in your exercise, in your lifestyle. That's going to happen to Alberta. We are going to have to change from a monetary and fiscal policy, more fiscal because it's Alberta. A lot of people will have to re uh, review what they're gonna be doing going forward. There's gonna be a lot of businesses shut down because they're just not gonna be viable. But on the other side, we're gonna see a lot more innovation. We're yeah. gonna see a, a lot of diversification. Different businesses and different industries are coming to Alberta, are starting in Alberta. It's just gonna take a long time before we start seeing the Alberta of the old when we were we were all happy and money was flowing. Yes. That's going to take yeah. some time, but it'll be a while before we get there. Yeah. So, you know, I think um, these five months um, people have been staying home and they must be all thinking now what's the next step for them because those people who are in businesses and restaurants and all those people who got affected. So I think they, when we see there are lots of people who have become really innovative, you know, uh, like in, in, in my art world, like I'm an artist, so I, I see that lots of new things are coming up. So same way regarding the clothes and shoes and food and all that, new, new things are coming up. So do you think that these businesses by doing online will survive? Uh, to some degree, um, yeah. depending on how they shift their business models. So there are going to be businesses, and we've seen that in our city here in Calgary. Curbside is now a normal word in the normal, home. Yes. Uh, drop off, pick up, those types of uh, uh, terminology for food delivery is there yeah. now. Um, when you look at e-commerce as a whole, Shopify being one Canadian company out of Ottawa, for example, has seen an explosion number of businesses mm -hmm. sign up with their, their opportunity or their business, Shopify, to provide e-commerce. There are so many businesses in Calgary alone, forget about the rest of the country, uh -huh. that didn't have a website before COVID. Yeah. No mm -hmm. one knew they existed before, right. uh, before COVID. Now they have no choice. And so it's caught up to them a lot faster than they thought they would have to. And this is where there's going to be a big difference from the have and the have not, the ones that can actually innovate, change, 
and provide a different type of safe yet speedy service to their clients, as well as providing the high and, and uh, high level of customer service and product, whatever that may be, that's going to be the differentiation. That's why I call this a K recovery. Those businesses who get it and can shift quickly will survive. Those who can't may perish. You're yeah. right. So, okay, so you know, Faisal, you know, you like like you know, big you know, like oil companies like a Suncor and Imperial. So do you because I know they're like all this stuff they are working from home these days. They have like maybe 20, 30 percent with like the stuff in the office. And even in like, you know, because I was talking to someone uh, like in Fort McMurray, they said they are not not hiring either. It's just everything is kind of like frozen right now. So so then what do you see for the people like, you know, when like when do you see they're going to start hiring before the oil goes, goes up or because I know they have to start like 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 spending money. Otherwise, the economy won't move. Yeah. So basically what you're asking me, Jalal, is when can the patient start playing sports again after yes, a double heart yes, attack? Yes, yes, and and right. that goes from any doctor would tell you after a double heart attack. It all depends on the individual patient. That's right. And every company is different. What Suncor or Imperial or any of the big boys in the in the oil patch uh, will go through is all based on how they've been performing, what they've been shifting. I'll give you an example. Suncor has been looking at other types of energy beyond oil and gas. It's not just mm. going to be that. We've got a, a big push to diversify. We are going to be the energy capital of Canada, regardless yeah. of what type of energy it may be. But yeah. we are looking at different types of energy from wind, solar, uh, you know, all those different types of, uh, of energy out there. It's going to take some time. But these large businesses as a whole will be able to, uh, will be able to pull through it. For the individual, the individual mm. Calgarian or Albertan, wherever they're located, this is the big shift. And I use the analogy of when Amazon first came out and was just going game busters. Yeah. Everybody was talking about the small bricks and mortar. And what I yeah. mean by that is let's go with when Amazon first started as a bookstore and they yeah. were delivering books online. The book yeah. stop, bookstore owner in the cities was in big trouble. Uh -huh. and they didn't innovate, they didn't change, and they didn't meet the demands of their customers. And now uh, good luck of finding a bookstore that has survived in large numbers in any metropolitan area. It's just changed. So these business owners had to change their model or start a different business completely. I have a lot of faith and confidence in business and on, business owners and entrepreneurs in this country. If anything mm -hmm. that they've learned is they know how to adjust, switch and change. Yeah. Uh -huh. For the employees out there, that's where it gets a bit more challenging. They have to do a bit of a gut check and see do they have the skill sets for what's gonna happen five, 10, 15 years down the road and that's where things were going to be a little bit more choppy for those individuals. You're right. Yeah. So, so do you think that you know now um, things are changing? People are uh, becoming more and more interested um, using online businesses, websites, and this. So, do you think that all the universities will add now more courses and more? Um, these kind of uh, subjects so that people are getting degrees in those rather than only like lawyers, engineers, um, medical doctors and all that. So it has affected everyone. So do you think now there will be a shift in, in the courses, in the degrees, in the more IT degrees and more all those innovations? Do you think that will happen? Yeah, so what I think's happened in COVID was yeah. the compound effect over the last 10 to 15 years. Uh -huh. We will always need lawyers, engineers, and doctors. Yeah. That's going to be, I think, for, for yeah. a very long time. That's right. It's the, it's the programs that these post-secondary education institutions are now starting to realize that the concept of STEM, S-T-E-M, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, is going to be a bigger focus. And if you look uh -huh. at Hazri Mama as an example, who talked about this, a few jubilees ago, and and we've talked about, we've heard about this from many, many high-end profile CEOs and leaders of the business world. They've all been pushing augmented reality, artificial intelligence, coding. Wow. Those types of thing, of technology yeah. are all has always been there from a change perspective. Yeah. COVID just made everything speed up a lot quicker. So you're going to start seeing more and more institutions look yeah. at that. But at the end of the day, it's the passion of the individual who's connected to that, that skill set will make them thrive through all these types of things. It's not just going to be the institution that provides that degree or diploma. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. So, you know, like, you know, like, you know, as you know, since March, 
like like our federal government, they started a, they, they started a CERT program. And now uh, people are on it for last four or five months now, even though, uh, you know, what, like, you know, what people are talking on the radio, because I was listening to 770 a couple of days ago. So that's what they were talking about, like, like you know, in the evening. People doesn't want to go back to work because they yeah. are getting paid more through CERT. Right. So it's very tough to push people to go back to work now because we need to move economy. Schools are opening too. So what do you want to say about this? Like, like yeah. of course, you know, I think the government did their part, but maybe it's like kind of kind of the overdone. I don't know. Like, what yeah. do you say? I, I don't believe the CERB is going to be here forever. Yeah. At some point, it's going to change. In fact, at the end of this month, there is a change yeah. from CERB to EI. And that uh -huh. has a little bit of a negative. It's still wider in regards to who they accept in the EI program than ever before. But it is a bit of a change. And as we open up the economy, as uh, kids go back to school, so parents can go back to work and so on, they're going to be able to, to adjust that program. I do not believe they're going to continually, and nor can they afford to continually yeah. pay out these types of, of benefits to individuals. What it also has done is brought up the conversation of a universal basic income. Uh, that's mm -hmm. being talked about quite a bit. It's also been discussed about what's the kind of care an individual employee needs to feel safe to come mm -hmm. to work. That's a bit of a concern. And then also the valuation of what matters in, in people's lives. And, and so, yes, the CERB has overpaid many Canadians. It is also underpaid many Canadians. Yeah, that's and right. so both sides have been impacted either positively right. or negatively. And I yeah. do not believe this is going to last forever. So we are going to see a gradual case. It just can't be taken off this quickly. There are still only, I, from the last I heard, only 60% 60 60 of businesses are open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Forget That's about right. fully staffed. Forget about That's back right. to normal. Just open. So there's going to be a long wait before. Small and medium-sized businesses is the backbone of this country. And so yeah. they have to look at that regardless of whichever uh, political yeah. uh, party is in, in power and that because we have a minority government, they need approval of at least one party to to get their bills uh, passed through parliament. So it's going to be a tough slow uh, go. It's going to be it's going to be slow and steady, and we're going to be probably having another round or two of of uh, of bailout or stimulus, if you want to call it. And yeah. that that I think is going to happen. But at at some point, you're not going to get Serb, and then what do you do? Yeah. What do you do? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I know this is, um, CERB has really helped, but at the same time, the people have to understand that now they have to start seriously thinking to go back to work because the schools are starting now and now they have no excuse for that. So either they should start some something at home, like seriously, and or they should start opening something innovative that they can survive. Because the survey is not going to last forever. Yeah, I yeah. think you, you've nailed it, Selma, that people have to do some self-reflection on yeah. what they want in the future. And you That's said right. one word that was very interesting. You used the word survive. Yeah. And so we have been accustomed in this society to do more than just survive. Yeah. We've, been, we've been thriving on a lot of um, extras. And COVID has brought that out from traveling yeah. to eating out to all the yeah. things that we've spent yeah. our money on that are not necessities in life we've enjoyed. So when we look at this and an individual wants to have more of a flexibility, self-employment or other ways of receiving income, mm -hmm. they will have to now measure what does the word survive mean? Mm -hmm. Is it survive like it was before COVID or is it survive like we were during COVID? Those are two different types of lifestyles and the individual yeah. has to figure that out. And I would suggest or even recommend to your viewers and listeners that be very careful of just making a big jump like that, plan things out, but make sure that you've got some sort of regular income because at some point, these banks are not going to be able to give you a deferral on your mortgage. No. The city will not be able to defer your property tax. Yeah. Utility bills are still gonna come back in. The yeah. basics just to survive on your day-to-day -day needs, they're gonna come back and ask for their money. And if you don't have that flow and, and that cash flow coming in, that can be a problem. So let's not overreact by saying I'm going to quit yeah. and start my own business and yeah. not have income for one year because yeah. the serve may be gone and you may not have that opportunity. That's right. Yes, that's so true. Very well yeah. said. Very well said. Yeah. So, and you know about you know about our students. You know, as you know, we have a like you know few like kind of uh, like you know, famous universities 
universities in Canada. And so, you know, there are about 60 to 70 percent we used to get foreign students. So now they're not coming in for a year or two now. So so the like like the tuition fee is gone up. So people or the students like my son, he's here, he, you know, he goes to Montreal. So of course his fees has gone up as well. So is there any program or is there anything? What can we do for our kids? Got to pay the fee. <laughs> that's that's, that's the easy answer. That's the easy answer. Like it's, yeah. it's the entry fee to get to, to for the program. And uh, there are programs out there. I would, I would strongly suggest for those individuals who are, are finding it challenging with the increase in tuition costs to, to now really look at the programs that are out there, such as grants, such yeah. as scholarships, yeah. such as programs out there, there are some opportunities. And this is a good time for our youth yeah. to think about how they can create their own income to support their own uh, future post-secondary education. That's right. I have a niece living with me uh, for the past six years going to University of Calgary, and she's on a fantastic job at, at working part-time while going to school to fund her lifestyle, her costs, her tuition, and everything else. Yeah. I think there's been a lot of push towards uh, being independent without really being independent because they're living uh -huh. off of mom and yes. dad. Yes. And yeah. now I think this is yeah. the time, especially for those families who just can't afford that increase in, in tuition. It's now a family affair, not just the parents' affair, and everybody should get involved. That's you're so you know, right. Yes. So and also so right. uh, people should also realize that um, now they should be spending more in Canada because now they cannot travel. They cannot go to places right now. So you see, now we are seeing that people are discovering things more where they are living and which they never discovered. And like I myself discovered so many things in Calgary, which you take it for granted and you just go away from your, so I think that way some help will be given to your province by spending more money into your local tourism rather than thinking about, oh, you have so much in Canada that you should first explore that and help your economy of your own country. I think that way, um, I think that will really help in, in the economy. What do you think? Yeah, I think it does contribute to the bottom line for sure. Yeah. I'll give you my personal example. Not too long ago, I think a month ago, I went to Jasper. I yeah. haven't been to Jasper for probably 20 years. Yeah. And it was, I had no choice but to look out in Alberta to travel to. Yeah. Um, and so off I went to Jasper and it was a great, great time out there. Yeah. I did some different experiences that I've never done before. Um, and, and so, yes, that is an opportunity. This is the, the point of what global um, competition has brought to us. We have been accustomed to buy and to go global. And when that gets shut down for whatever reason, we start to realize what we have in our, in our own backyard. And I think what we've taken for granted over That's the years right. is that you can get anything delivered to your door from any company, right. name whatever you'd like. And uh -huh. primarily it was built in China or some yeah. Asian country. And yeah. now that supply chain is gonna be changed and there are choices we can make. Yes, yeah. you can choose to be local, but I question how the thought process is for how long we can do that. Yeah. Think about it this way. There are, there's 10 times more population in the United States. If mm -hmm. they just shopped local and didn't buy any Canadian goods, we'd be in trouble. That's it's right. Chinese, which is way more in population, yes. or yeah. India, which has way more population, didn't buy our goods, we'd be in trouble. So globalization is still needed. We've been trouble. The it's trade still is still needed. But yeah. I think you make a good point, Selma, by saying, you know, we've got some great spots in our own yeah. backyard. Let's yeah. take a look at them, especially during COVID because during we can't COVID, travel. Yeah. Here's the opportunity. And I'm, and I'm seeing more and more local businesses from a tourism perspective or just yeah. local business saying, are you local? We'll give you a discount. Some of the major hotel chains have done that. Yeah. Air Canada, WestJet yeah. have done that. A mm -hmm. lot of companies are doing that as well. And I think that's, that's kudos on them to realize who their real uh, um, patriots are. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that definitely is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, there is a question for you, Faisal, from the like our, our good friend, Alor. Okay, what does pivoting mean and how and how go we apply it? Yeah. Example? Pivot, yeah. Pivoting, the, the word for during COVID has been pivot. How do we yeah. how do we just switch it and change <laughs> it to do something different? It's been a very popular word, almost as popular as coronavirus. And that's so, right. And so, I'll use pivot in the answer in two different facets. Number one, pivot for businesses. We have seen, and Salma, you and I were just talking about this, where 
where businesses are going more online, e-commerce and so forth. That's a yeah. pivot. That's a change. Yeah. Yeah. Some of these businesses have realized they cannot do the things they used to do. And so they have to do some sort of change. So that's uh -huh. one sort of pivot. From yeah. a personal perspective, I have seen more and more Canadians get involved in their financial affairs. They're learning more about what they need to do to be financially and fiscally responsible. Right. They're understanding their uh, how to invest, the concepts of taxation, the concepts of uh, retirement planning, estate planning. They've spent, they've had the time and now they've pivoted in their life and said, these are the priorities, at least from a financial perspective. And I just recently wrote a letter for my, uh, my, my daughter's uh, school project that she has talking about, she has a time capsule and she needed me to write a letter for the future uh, okay. uh, name of Jenna. So future Jenna, I said to her, during COVID, I spent more time with you than I did normally because you would be in school. Yeah. I got to see you go to school online yeah. and spend uh -huh. time with you. We're going to pivot to see what's important in our lives when it comes to our families and when it mm -hmm. comes to our faith. And yeah. that's where I think a lot of this is going to be a change. So that, to answer the question about what does pivot really mean and how do you do it, it's just making a shift in your life and, yeah. and a different direction that you want to go because of the circumstances. You can do that in business and you can do that in personal life as well. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. Okay, good that's question, great. Lord. Yeah, good question. Yeah. Okay, and you know, Phil, sir, uh, so, you know, I just want to talk about uh, a little bit about uh, technology. Uh, you know, if I take you back a little bit, you know, we so we've seen the Amazon, you know, because uh, there was a, uh, then we've seen the Uber came, then we've seen like uh, you deliver what is it uber eats and uh, skip the dishes skip now the because dishes. so now because of the because of covid they are busy like anything so where do you see the technology moving even after the covid i think technology is going to be a big push forever and and it all de depends on what you define as technology from mm -hmm. going back over a hundred years ago from when we went from horseback to vehicle, that vehicle yeah. was technology. When we started building machines in our factories, instead of using human labor, that was technology. The technology now is faster, bigger, better, but it's gonna change. And I think some of the stuff that, that we need to be aware of is artificial intelligence and yeah. augmented reality. Those two areas are just exploding. They're gonna be fantastic ways of the future, it's going to cause a lot of disruption for many businesses. Yeah. But those are two areas that I spend a lot of time reading on, understanding and seeing where the opportunities are. So there's some major companies and very small companies who've taken a footprint in that. And just to give you a bit of the idea, when you look at Uber or Amazon, how they've disrupted either the taxi business or the, the, the bricks and mortar business, augmented reality is going to really shape up how retail business can bring a product or a service into your into your home mm -hmm. without you actually yeah. purchasing, so you can experience it. It's going to yeah. happen in TV. So Apple is now testing come 2022 of bringing augmented reality, the actual show, onto your tabletop, and then bringing it back into your device. These yeah. are mm -hmm. neat things to give you a different type of experience. And I'm mentioning big companies; they're not the ones that are generally innovating. It's these smaller companies from around the world who come up with these ideas. And when then sometimes the big boys take them out from an, a buyout or a share purchase, but there's a lot of stuff going on. And I, I really give kudos to one company, Ikea. They Ikea. really tested this well a few years ago on the iPhone. Yeah. What you could do is go through their catalog, go on your phone, on the catalog, and then point to any spot in your home and see how that that artifact or that that person that item that you wanted to buy would look in yeah. your home. Wow, yeah. what a yeah. different perspective. Now they've That's worked right. on the technology over the past few, few years, but that then gives me the experience. And trust me, I don't like shopping. I don't like going into a mall. Definitely don't like going to Ikea. I always get lost in there. Yeah. Now I can bring Ikea to me to and me. bring it into my home with one click on my phone. That's, That's right. where the future is going. And I think there's huge opportunities. I'm actually excited about how much the future will be for the, the change in business, the change in the economy, how quickly. Like, look at how, how we're debating in the United States of how they should vote. And, yes. and, and that alone, mail in online, open up you know, stadium, football stadiums to bring in people for proper social distance. This is the innovation. And yeah. one thing I, I really tell my clients about, uh, about the economy and society as a whole, 
we don't normally go backwards. We always move forward. It takes a, there's a lot of ripples and impacts of this, but generally speaking, society has always moved forward and, and that's where yeah. we're going to continue to go. So mm -hmm. right, you are yeah. right on the spot. Yeah. yeah, this is the change we are seeing, you know, and I hopefully people also should understand like it may impact your activity level. That yeah. is my concern. So like we'll be sitting in front of our desktop or your laptop or all that because your phone. But at the same time, people have to think that you have to have a priority for your fitness, for your activity, and that is very important. It and is, yeah. that is yeah. my little bit of a concern. Yeah. But other than that, innovation is there, and it will keep on growing and keep on growing, and more and more people will be using like what IKEA is doing, and um, it's that's what is going to happen. Yeah, I but, think you've yeah. nailed a good thing there, Soma. When you look at, and I'll pick again on Apple with your. Apple iPhone or your even your Apple Watch. And I'm wearing yeah. an Apple Watch today. And this yeah. thing keeps on telling me to stand up, sit down, yeah. walk, yeah. run, do all these things. That's right. And if I'm motivated to get these activities done, I will get them done with helps of these devices. The, right. the healthcare sector and the technology sector are going to get blurry over time. You're going to yeah. see a, a merger of these two industries slowly. And it's going to be the technology um, that's, right. that's going to push healthcare to the next level where you can now have an online conversation with your doctor or that's you can right. do a fitness class from your own home. Yeah, it's happening right home. now. The yeah. Peloton as an example. So even though we may be somewhat stuck in our homes, yeah. we still can be active. And I think there's very uh, there's a big opportunity. Yeah. Not everybody will jump on that on that bandwagon, but those who do will still see the benefits of being physically active. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, I got a last question before we let you go, Faisal. Uh, you know, as you know, like in November, there's election coming. And that's going to impact the Canadian economy as well. And so because, you know, what, like, you know, what I'm hearing from people, of course, like uh, Trump, he's in favor for, like, for our pipeline. But the other, like, a Democratic, they are not. So whatever result comes. So as a Canadian, what do we have to do? Yeah, so I, I look at the election as just a point in time. It's what's going to happen with the other houses. So from the the Senate and the and the the House itself, uh, that's going to be a big a big decision maker. So there could be a full sweep of all Democrats in this next election. That does cause some mm -hmm. concerns. What it does do is open up more and more trade. Uh, so that's going to be yeah. very interesting. Keep in mind, Trump has used the trade. Uh, as a negotiation tactic to bring more jobs back to the United States. I have not heard from the Democratic platform that that's going to be uh, one of the things they want to do. So they're going to mm -hmm. be probably more lenient on China, more lenient with our new NAFTA. They're yeah. going to have more of the, that's what it seems to be. But again, not one president in history from my research has been a game changer for Canada. It's been multiple uh, um, bills that have been passed. And it's also been the relationship between the two countries. At the uh -huh. end of the day, uh, there's a lot of people that are going to be impacted on both sides of the border That's if right. the trade does not go through, if there's no benefit. Pipeline is one of those issues. And yes. I've been saying to Albertans, yeah. let's move forward as if the pipeline's not going to be there. Yeah. What do yes. we do? That's the what magic that plan. Yeah. If we get the pipeline, it goes through and everything works out, fantastic. But let's yeah. assume we don't have a pipeline. Now what do we do? It's yeah. going to be challenging, but I know Alberta can do it. If, yeah, let's hope, yeah. Oh, let's hope so. Yeah. yeah so, the, how people can contact you if someone wants to contact you? How can yeah. You? yeah, just reach out to our website, pkag.ca. More than happy to chat or just join us on, on CTV or AM 770 for yeah. all of the news talk. Yeah. That's awesome. right. Nice talking to you. So many nice things. Yeah. Thank Keep you it for up, having Vessel. Me. You're doing very well. And, um, We'll, in, we'll be in touch with you after a few months and see where things are leading to. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you for having me on your show. Anytime. Right. Thank you so Anytime. much. Thank you hey, so much. Bye. So one and only Faisal Karmali from the CTV News and 770. Wow. What a... It was